Is this a pivotal draft for the 49ers? I mean, they don't have any picks. They have one pick in the top 100. It's number 99. But but they're losing a lot of depth. Yeah, it's, I, I think it is to a pivotal draft because, like you said, losing depth. And this is kind of like, you know, the Niners' moment to shine, right? This is where they're supposed to thrive in the middle rounds. This is where they always get their hits. It's, it's kind of why all their whiffs in the first round, despite all their whiffs in the first round, you know, you let McGlinchey leave and all these other, aside from like Bosa and Ayuk, even second round picks, it's why you can sustain so well because you're hitting on these other guys and it's making up for that losses. So kudos on you. Um, I, I actually thought it was funny about what John Lynch said in his in his answer about, hey, why why are you so successful in your middle rounds? And he mentions, well, I think it's because we're collaborative and yada, yada, yada where you, we, we challenge each other and stuff like that. And it's like, wait, if you're so successful in the middle rounds and you're collaborative, what does that mean about your first and second rounders? You're not collaborative because you've missed a ton in those rounds. That's a great it? point. That's, that's a great point. Like, oh, it's because Carl Spann's pulling the trigger and usurping everyone and saying, no, screw you. I'm picking we this guy. Like, oh, you know, when coaches yeah. usually pick the heavy picks and I'm thinking about, you know, like the Bill, Bill O'Brien's, the John Gruden's of the world who pick these guys and why are they always suck? Because the coaches are terrible scouting yeah. talent evaluators. That's yes. one thing. That's not them. So yes, they're not collaborating. They don't put the, the time. They don't put the time in these scouts do it for years. You put, turn on the tape for a, a week and you act like you can see it. Don't do that. That's Don't why do that. you have drafts yeah. of like, you know, a, a Javon Kinlaw with only one year of like, of like showing anything. And then you have the red flags like, ah, I don't care. We got the Dante Pettis, from the trenches. Dante Pettis, Dante Pettis Danny Saul Gray, Thomas. Trey Sermon, Ty Davis Price. Any one of those uh, picks in rounds one, two or three that didn't work out. Kello Witherspoon. Those are Kyle saying, no, 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 no. That's what I want. This is what I want. One through three is the weighted picks. People like you at two, two to two. Two, especially third round picks, really get dumbed down a little too much. It's like, no, third round picks are still a fairly high. You can get adequate starters there if you're if you're doing a good job of it. And no, th you should be looking at those guys as guys who can develop into starters. Day two picks yes. are guys you're Three expecting to develop into game. starters. Day three guys are guys who could be backups. And if they, you know, surprise you, then great. But those are special teams, backups, all that kind of stuff. No, yeah, day three, the day two. On those and turn them yeah. into stars and stuff like that. They get more credit than they should. Oh. I don't want to say in the show they do they get rifle credit, but it's like it's like yeah, it's like that's the only reason why it kind of balances in a, in a way why they get those first day one and day two whiffs. It's like because they're able yeah. to resupply and make up for it, which is fine, I guess. But did they did they draft it. Kittle like expecting he was going to be a starting tight end? No, I mean, I, they don't, they I don't, don't do know. that. That's what I'm saying. Hell no, you don't. I don't know. You weren't doing that. You didn't draft Brock Purdy thinking he was going to be your starter, for instance. Yeah. No, you didn't draft all. The, you didn't draft Elijah Mitchell thinking you didn't he draft Talanoa thinking no. he was going to be all pro safety. Like, but when it hits, it's great. And and they hit a lot, but I think with 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 day two, the ex, it's not that kind of like, hey, you know, if it hits, it hits. Like you're drafting guys that you think could be starters year two, so you're, yeah. it, you know, there's a there's a clear need and a path for these guys to play. But and and, and they're Kyle's picks, which is so interesting. And he said, "Why do we do well later? Because we work together as opposed to earlier in the draft." That's Hilarious. what I thought was funny about yeah. that. But yes, this is a pivotal draft because again. This is collaborative. Kyle Shan's not gonna have too much hands on it. But I'm pretty sure he's not gonna have too much hands on it. He'll probably okay the trades, of course, but I don't think he's gonna be too much like meddling. Um, and I, I know this is kind of similar to last year in terms of like they didn't have a day one pick, right? Um, it's gonna be the same thing, but you got to live in now. So I think this is pivotal. You gotta hit on these guys. This is where your strengths are. This is this is where your strengths are, even though they don't have a first round pick. Essentially, they these picks are your first round picks because this is where you really thrive and hit on them. So because we are, you're expected and you have been known to hit on these, you kind of have to hit on these guys and you have to find a couple, not even a couple, a few really good ones. It doesn't matter if you package them up and get, get someone more proven and polished, but this is pretty pivotal at this point, considering you got Kittle on the way, or, I mean, on the way out, but like te teetering down the contract, you know, Eric Armstead eventually down the line, right? Chant Williams, all these players. So this, this is, this is a really, this should be a draft to reload on. Yeah, and I think it's an interesting draft the way it's structured. Like it's like different phases. The first phase is picks 99, 101, 102. Those are Kyle's picks, obviously. And those are going to be guys that he thinks can contribute this year, next year. It's going to be really interesting to see what he does. Then they don't pick f until 155. It's 50 picks later. You got 155, 164, 173. Three picks within 18 in round five. That's the Niners money round, right? That's where they strike gold and they've got three picks right there. So that'll be interesting. They're banking on their success there and then you got to wait again another 50 picks until the end of round six they got 216 222 so one at the end of round six one at the end of, at the beginning of round seven those will be an interesting little combination of picks and then you got three at the end of round seven which could end up being on you know practice squad guys or whatever so like four little different spots 
Uh, the first one's for Kyle. The second one is that fifth round magic. Then you got that little, I mean, end of round six, beating around seven. That's like Elijah Mitchell, Jawan Jennings territory. And then the end of round seven, like, are you going to take another quarterback? Are you going to do another Brock Purdy? Are you going to mm -hmm. take a kicker? You could do stuff like that. They're definitely taking a kicker. I think they're definitely a kicker. taking a kicker. <laughs> Which you know, quarterback do you think they take? Do you think they take a quarterback? Yeah, I think they take a quarterback now. I, I put I, Stetson Bennett in as the as oh, pick two fifty five. No. Take Jake Hayner or something like that, please. God, no, do not take. Well, Jake Hayner is going to be. They got to take him in round three. You think Kyle takes a, a quarterback with one of his three three third round picks? No, I don't think he does. I don't think he does. I think he likes Darnold too much to do it. Yeah. I think he legitimately likes Darnold. I mean, that's why they maybe, signed him, right? Maybe, maybe that's why the organization keeps bringing in other quarterbacks. They're like, look, Kyle, I know you really like Darnold, and Christian says he's a good quarterback, but why don't you just get to know Jake Hayner? Why don't you just get to know Dorian Thompson Robinson? Before you make your mind up, here. They got to add a third quarterback like, anyways. They got to get through OTAs and training camp, but I digress. I think another thing that makes this more of a pitiful draft is – so much of what I've been seeing last month is how this is not a top heavy draft. And I keep hearing like after like the top 10 picks, everything falls off. I'm like, God damn, why are the, why are the back drafts back to back kind of like lame a little bit in terms of talent, top end talent, but I digress. And you know how it's a bad draft. You know how you know it's a bad draft. A running back's going to go top 10. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's how you know. So that's all that's I was like, you know. there's only yeah. one receiver expected. I'm like, Jesus, what the hell is going on? But anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So this is being said, this is more of a day two day. A 5'11 quarterback's going to go number one. Yeah, yeah, see? So that's why. A guy who puts mayo in his coffee, Jesus Christ. Dude, I don't <laughs> He's going to go number two. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, so I think this puts more pressure on the 49ers because, look, this is not expected to be a first, second round draft, so good on you. This is the one year where this is okay not to have a top pick. This is where you guys are supposed to thrive. There's supposed to be plenty of those third, fourth, fifth, sixth guys, which is this is your element. So there's no excuses why you can't find, like, what, at least three good players, right, whether they're key role players slash starters. They don't have to be all pro. I mean, it'd be nice if you get one of them Pro Bowl caliber, but yeah, this 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 is your element. This is your field. Other teams who aren't known to hit the middle rounds, who will rely on those top picks, are going to be like, God damn, we're really desperate to trade down. And it's going to be like the Niners, are like, no, this is the perfect year to have all the third, fourth round, fifth round picks. Yeah, and I think it's interesting. It's it's a good uh, setup for them to replenish their depth, which they don't have as much anymore. But at the same time, they say they're trying to do big things this year, and with no picks in the top ninety eight, I'm wondering, can they find any impact players? that make them better this year. Yeah. They did last year. I mean, they had Jordan Mason, Brock Purdy. They found some guys late. Uh, can they do it again? Because they need to. If they need to. But outside of those two you mentioned, Jordan Mason and Brock Purdy, who else? It wasn't It wasn't helpful. Jake Jackson. I'm not putting Jake Jackson in there. He was rotational. Not, sure. not tight of his price. Not Sam Womack. Burford. Burford started. Okay, he yeah, didn't make that. an impact, but at least he's, he played. Which is impressive for, for yeah. a, a yeah, yeah, no, no, that, that counts. That definitely yeah. a thousand percent counts. So three, they got three. They got three. Can they do that this year? That would be that'll be huge. But really, Burford was the only one they kind of planned on, right? Because Purdy was not planned on, so that was kind of like they didn't more, really play Mason like they should have. No, they didn't play Mason like they should have. And was he wasn't he dra undrafted or was he actually drafted? Yes, he was. Huh? He was undrafted, and he took the play away from both uh, Trey Sermon and Ty Davis Price. Yeah. See, so. It's last year's draft was definitely more a longevity thing, but I think also because Jake Jackson was supposed to be more of the impactful guy and he just wasn't. So this year it's big on him, right? We've already discussed that last year's draft was more about longevity and future, like Nick Sakels, um, Jason, mm -hmm. the Jason Pose, the Calia Davises, you know, all those players I think those are more like longevity players that they were looking down the line this year. It's kind of like, can we get like a, a, an impact, like you said, an impact player or two, some guy who can get like 20 snaps a game on the other side of the ball, depending, um, it, it, it's really going to be huge. Or someone just you can find a starter, a starter, a starter down the line. It, 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 again, this is this is really in their element. Your pivotal draft is here. Uh, we we kind of can't afford to have too many whiffs right now. Yeah, um, I'm going back to Jordan Mason. I'm looking at his numbers right now. It's, this is amazing to me. So Jordan Mason, 43 carries, 258 yards, and a touchdown last year. Six yards a carry. Debo Samuel, 42 carries. 232 yards, three touchdowns, 5.5 yards per carry. So Jordan Mason actually outperformed Debo on the ground last year. Elijah Mitchell did two, 45 carries, 279 yards, 6.2 yards per carry. The Niners have literally three running backs who are better than Debo at playing running back. So Debo, great, love your wide back stuff, but they need you to play wide receiver, man. They got running backs. They didn't have running backs in 2021. You filled in. Thank you very much. That was clutch. They got them now. You got to play wide receiver. That's another tangent. Sorry. Debo hates me, so I just want to let him know since he's watching. That I'm, I'm, I'm on his side, and I believe in him. 
the biggest threat of Debo Samuel is the threat of Debo Samuel. I'll never not it's say true. that. It's true. We'll, we'll see if that relies the same to, again this upcoming season, which it better not. It better not because he's going to get those three to four carries a game still. He definitely is. Do something with him because in the playoffs he did not a nair nutter. 